I've been working on this for a few years um, with all of the Occupy uh, focus being brought down now on the injustices brought on to us by Wall Street Bill. I think the timing is right right now. And, and if we can really put the pressure on, maybe we can get this bill passed out of committee before cutoff, which comes up this week. So we're under a really tight deadline, and there's a lot of sympathy on these committees, but not enough to get them out at this point. So we really got to press. We dropped the bill in, in 2010 um, after uh, a lot of discussion, and that was just to introduce the concept to the legislature. In the 2011 session, we refined the bill quite a bit and came up with House Bill 1320 as the Senate counterpart. And we had great presentations, hearings in the House and Senate committees, uh, but we're not able to move the bill. It died in committees on both sides. So, what we did was we re-strategized and said, let's create a task force during this interim. <clears throat> so we redrafted this bill into a task force bill to steer it around the banking committee where we stalled. <laughs> <laughs> and we got it exec out of the capital budget committee. That was great. Unfortunately, there was other things that were caught up in that bill and the bill didn't get passed by the House. But nonetheless, <coughs> Speaker of the House, Frank Chop, is very supportive of this, of this concept and wants to see it happen. So during this past summer, we implemented uh, the uh, task force provisions of 2040, even though the bill didn't pass. So this summer, I've been working, I chaired the task force. There was a, myself and a Republican counterpart on the task force and then seven banking experts who were able to, my, my criteria for uh, appointing task force members was that they had to have considerable banking experience, but they also had to be open to the concept of public banking. So we put that together. Uh, we came up with a very good product, I believe, in House Bill 2434 that is on the um, committee dockets right now. Create jobs and build infrastructure. Um, that's what it can do right now. And I'll give you some data on how well we can do that uh, later on in the presentation. Access to capital, create and preserve private sector jobs. Um, this piece of it ran into a roadblock. Um, there, the Constitution says that we are prohibited from lending the state's credit for private purposes. So uh, one of the major motivators that got me moving on this bill to begin with was hearing the stories of small business owners and farmers who were being cut off on their lines of credit. Mm. Oh, thank you. Who were being cut off uh, on their lines of credit from the banks and were literally, the, that had the effect of starving the businesses and small bankers out. So uh, in order to increase access to capital for small businesses and farms, now looking at the Bank of North Dakota model, um, this, this could leverage the state's resources to provide that access to credit. Unfortunately, naysayers have been really focusing on the fact that that's unconstitutional. So we could pass a constitutional amendment along with this bill to make that allowable, but that's like compounding the, the <laughs> growing the mountain that we have to try to push this boulder over. So rather than take that tag, the committee thought that it's more important to get something up and running. rather, than, And then once the public feels comfortable that they are truly in control of this, that it is a well-run institute agency and uh, is fully transparent, there's full accountability in it, build some confidence in it, then we can look at maybe broadening the mission of it. So right now we're focused, the, the 2434 has narrowed the focus of this Washington Investment Trust, what we're calling it, to focusing on what we think is clearly constitutional. The exceptions to provide lending the state's credit um, are that you can lend it for public purposes, and that's clearly infrastructure. So we would be lending to municipalities and political subdivisions to build water systems, schools, you know, public infrastructure. The other piece that the speaker really wanted to see in here was for student loans. Um, and as long as it's within the parameters of supporting the poor and infirm, which is the other constitutional exception. 
So those are the couple of areas that we're looking at focusing in on. Another issue that came up during the task force hearings this summer was this whole blow up about how Chase is charging off of their debit cards 85 cents every time a recipient of public funds uses their debit card. So uh, that's another area that the Washington Investment Trust can look at getting into.